This insane HOA story just got a huge new update and I'm going to include the whole saga here so you don't miss out. Get ready. Vindictive ex-wife illegally signed application to the local HOA in my name. Check out this video in podcast form by searching Austin Stories wherever you listen or check the video description for a link. I'll start this off by saying my ex is vindictive as heck. We've been fully divorced since about right before the pandemic started. We sold the house we shared and I didn't have to pay her alimony because she cheated and were in an at-fault state. It was as messy since D-Day. All of the stereotypes. First, the sobbing and then the trickle truth saying, I love you. It was just one time. Okay, it was two years. And then the gaslighting followed by, I'm going to take you for everything before packing her crap and walking out. I feel like I never really knew the woman my ex was in all the time we were together. We were married five years and together for seven. And in two of those five married years, she had affairs with three other men. The final one being a foreign businessman out of some sort from what I could figure out. Yes, I got tested for STDs and was thankfully negative. Yes, she got pregnant by the final affair partner, and no, I didn't sign the birth certificate because I found out about all the affairs before the baby was born, thanks to a call from the first affair partner. My ex tried to go full scorched earth on me. But since we live in and were married in an at-fault state, she lost. We didn't pay equally into our house, and the equity was divided 70-30. So I got a pretty good cash payout when I sold our marital home to put as a down payment on a different house closer to my job. It's a bit of a downgrade, but suits a single guy in his 30s like me just fine. My ex did show up to my house once, but I refused to let her in. She barked and complained at me that I'd financially ruined her in the divorce. I said that if she was fully willing to do that to me first, and the witch had the audacity to say it should have been my life screwed over and not hers. I laughed so hard and said it was karma. She yelled that she'd sue me for what was rightfully hers. I said if she was going to sue me, then to go ahead and sue me. It ended up the same way in court because she had nothing but a false sob story. She was the cheater, not me. I'm no angel, but I didn't do anything to her. And then she was the one who ruined our marriage. She then said that she'd tell everyone she could that I abused her. And I said that I'd sue her for defamation if she did. And I was recording our interaction and had those words saved to my phone. She went wide-eyed and her jaw dropped. The look people are calling the surprised Pikachu face was this. Then I asked why she was there, if not to just try and make trouble, because she had a new man in her life that knocked her up. She just huffed at me and said he isn't around much, and she's stuck in a tiny apartment living off his child support till he comes back. It was immature of me, I know, but I did the bit of playing the world's smallest violin. She yelled at me to go screw myself, and then I yelled back that I'd sooner do that than her any time. She raged at me and then got in her car to leave. I haven't seen her since. There's an HOA in my neighborhood, but I was not legally obligated to join it because the last owner of my house was not a member. I made sure of that through a real estate lawyer as well. The HOA had no grounds to force me to join and they were not happy about it. The HOA president would show up with forms every week for the first month demanding that I sign them. Then she threatened to take me to court to which I had to get a cease and desist sent to her from my lawyer to make her stop that. So she started harassing me by looking for any infractions that she possibly could to report me to the city. An inspector came out several times and found nothing wrong. In fact, I offered one of them a burger while grilling and they graciously accepted. Did I mention the HOA hates barbecues and parties that aren't approved in advance? Well, they do and I like to grill when the weather's good. And my neighbors actually love me for it because I invite them over. I had the police called on me several times for noise complaints because I was playing music on a Saturday afternoon while having my friends over. The HOA president I caught trespassing once when she was trying to peer into my windows. 
I called the police, but she denied ever doing it. So I got cameras. She hasn't trespassed since but I still got repeative passive-aggressive letters saying that my cameras were not an approved addition to my house. Some months ago, I started getting letters for fines in the mail, and when I contacted the HOA, their representative claimed that they had it on record that I joined and needed to pay all the fees effective immediately. I told them that that was not possible. And then, they emailed a scanned copy of the forms and they had a signature on them. But it was not mine. It was very similar in some ways, and I recognized right away as being my ex's handwriting. She knew what my signature looked like, but it was a loose imitation at best. I got in touch with the lawyer right away over the forged signature but the HOA still demanded to go to court, and it took seven months before that happened. Meanwhile, they were stacking unpaid fines against me weekly, and they were threatening to put a lien on my house. We went to court, and the HOA president looked very smug, but my lawyer pointed out how the signature wasn't the same as mine and was very inconsistent in the various forms. I never allowed the HOA president in my house, and I never requested the forms. The idiot HOA president actually slammed her palm on the table and said it was still binding. But when pressed where the fraudulent signature came from, she admitted my ex-wife called the HOA and they sent her the forms, then got them back in the mail signed. But then, she actually claimed she thought that I'd sign them. The judge looked at her and asked if she was serious, and she confirmed she was. The judge then asked how a woman I was no longer married to that had never even lived with me in my current residence was supposed to have any bearing on whether or not I joined her HOA. She went quiet, and I could see the Oh crap, look on her face as the hamster wheels were turning and she seemed to finally mentally put the pieces together. My lawyer then counterclaimed that what the HOA did was blatant fraud and legal actions must be taken. And they were. I countersued the HOA for the emotional distress of the harassment I've gotten since moving in, which I had lots of proof of. That won me about 10 grand after lawyer fees that I decided to put toward my mortgage. The HOA president was removed from her throne. I like to think she was kicking and screaming. She was also slapped with a hefty fine. I've seen her outside a few times and she always looks at me like I'm the devil. The HOA itself had to pay all of my legal fees too. I wanted to go after my ex for forging my signature. But I can't, because not long after she forged my signature on those forms, she apparently left the country to be with her third affair partner. She's uh, somewhere in Europe, from what I can see of the final post on her Facebook, before she disappeared. So I can't do anything against her unless she ever returns to the US. So that was a wash. I'm not getting letters from the HOA anymore though, and the new president has promised to keep things completely cordial from now on. I still don't feel like I got much of a win in this though. Other than the $10,000 payout, it all felt like a huge waste of time. The juicy update. So I figured that she'd left for good. However, her affair partner who'd knocked her up eventually kicked her and their kid out. And then they came back to the US after my ex begged her parents to buy them tickets home. I guess the affair partner just wanted her as a side piece that he could toss out like a used doll once he was done with her. I kind of don't blame him for kicking her out because she's evil, but at the same time, he booted out his own kid too. If that's what he intended to do from the start, then he's just one of the worst kinds of people. The fraud case was obviously still open against my ex, and she got arrested not long after coming back into the country because her passport was flagged, and the police were there to arrest her on landing. When I finally saw her in court, she looked very different. She'd put on weight, she couldn't dye her hair or cake her face in makeup anymore, and there was just this aura of defeat about her. Not long after she was arrested, her parents showed up at my house and pleaded with me to drop any charges that I could, and then even had the audacity to ask me to take my ex back. Of course I refused, but it was in one ear and out the other with them. 
I visited my ex at jail only once because her parents hounded me for weeks and she put on the same kind of pitiful, I love you, feel sorry for me act as when I first confronted her with evidence of her infidelity. I told her that she couldn't be serious after the crap that she pulled. She never really loved me. She cheated on me with three men that I knew of and possibly more. She got pregnant by another man and had no remorse about how she destroyed our marriage. And then she maliciously tried to defame me. And she illegally signed me up for an HOA by forging my signature. Huh. And for the cherry on top, she ran away to another country like the pathetic cowardly bee she is. And she somehow hoped that I would take her back after all of that. Well, that was enough to make her see that she had zero chance of manipulating me. Even if heck froze over, I'd not take this woman back in any way. Her parents also couldn't really argue with my reasoning other than repeatedly saying that she's their only daughter and the mother of their only grandchild. Her mother kept crying that my ex could change. I said, hey, she can change without me. I'm done with her. And then they tried the stupidest thing yet. They told me that my ex and I were still married in the eyes of God and that I have to help her because it's a Christian thing to do. I asked them what the Bible said about infidelity if they were going to bring religion into it and they shut up. I then slammed the door in their faces, and they hounded me till I called police on them, and then I got my lawyer to send a cease and desist to my ex's parents to stop trying to contact me, or I'd file charges against them too. That finally stopped them. But I do kind of wonder if they'll try to pursue child support from the father of my ex's kid since they're stuck raising them now, if that's even possible. What with like, the father being in a different country and all, and well, he's on the move a lot from what I've heard. My ex could not be bailed out of jail by her parents because she was denied that option since already being guilty of fleeing once. And even if she did have a set bail, I bet it would have been so high that there's no way her parents could have paid it. My ex originally pled not guilty, but I think her lawyer convinced her to change it to guilty for a lesser sentence. Only problem for her was the judge presiding over the trial was a real hard butt and they charged my ex with felony fraud for forging my signature and mailing it, as well as knowingly fleeing the country to avoid charges. She got hit with a decent sentence of nearly a decade behind bars, no parole. By the time she gets out of prison, she'll be 42 years old. She broke down sobbing on the floor and had to be dragged out. I won't miss her. I think justice was served. I wasn't ecstatic about it or anything because I'd emotionally moved on from that woman long ago. And I've become happier because I've been dating a great woman for the past six months. She's a single mom and works as a clerk. Honestly, I already think I love her more than I ever did my ex. Her son seems to like me a lot too. His own dad is someone I haven't heard great things about. And if you're still wondering about that HOA, they've kept their promise and left me alone. But I've heard that behind closed doors, the old board that were all inevitably replaced hate my guts because I basically started their downfall. Yes, the entire board was eventually replaced. And the new board are running things far better now. Fines nearly stopped, monthly dues were lowered, several rules were removed from the CCNRs, and the street has been a happier place for a year now. Now, if you do check the Bible, divorce is frowned upon as a no-no. However, if there's abuse or adultery, ask a pastor, then yeah, things are different. What would have you done? HOA Karen put a lien on my house, but I'm not even in the HOA. Click the video on your screen so you find out what happens to that HOA, and I'll see you there.